chapter, verses 1 through 17, the Lord's commandments. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which I brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the waters under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord, thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth the sea and all that in them is and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his man's maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Now let's go into Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter, and see what the Lord wants us to do about these commandments. 12 and uh, verse 13 and 14. Go ahead. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God. And keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment. With every secret thing. Whether it be good. Or whether it be evil. Now we're going to go to Revelation 22nd chapter. And read verse 14. And so we can show you. What you have to do to get into God's kingdom. That's the father's kingdom. 
Go ahead. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Now, you can believe this if you want, sisters and brothers, but that is a direct road map to salvation. Now, we're going to get right into the lesson. This lesson is titled Two Mountains of Brass, Two Mountains of Brass. Why would the Lord have me put together a lesson like this? Is because, sisters and brothers, the Lord's business is man. And he's letting us know that you're going to have two nations, both of them in Europe. They're going to be the last two nations that's going to be in power. At that time, America will be under one or either under the Western Europe umbrella or under Eastern Europe umbrella. But nobody will be under the umbrella of America, of America at that time. And this lesson will let you know that the Lord is controlling this thing, but he has some real drama that's going to come up on earth. We might even call it World War Three. But we're going to show you that this is between Russia and all of the nations that's east of the Euphrates River and the, uh, the European Union, which is going to be over all of Western Europe. So we're going to start this in Zechariah, the first chapter. Zechariah chapter 1, and we're going to start reading at verse 7. Zechariah 1 and 7. Okay, go ahead. Upon the 4th and 20th day of the 11th month, uh -huh. which is the month Shabbat, in the second year of Darius, came the word of the Lord unto Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, the son of Edo, the prophet, saying. Now this is the second year of Darius. Came, came this word to Zechariah. What did he say? Go ahead and read. I saw by night, and behold, a man riding upon a red horse. Uh -huh. And he stood among the myrtle trees that were in the bottom, and behind him there were, there were their red horses speckled and white. Uh -huh. Then said I, O oh my Lord, what are these? And the angel that talked with me said unto me, I will show thee what these be. Now these four chariots here, led by, you know, pulled by these four uh, 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 horses, this represents the Lord's four angels that he is keeping this world in order with. So now Zechariah wants to know, what are these? And he's going to tell them. Go ahead and read. Verse 10, and the man that stood among the myrtle trees answered and said, these are they whom the Lord has sent to walk to and fro through the earth. Uh huh. And they answered the angel of the Lord that stood among the myrtle trees and said, we have walked to and fro through the earth. And behold, all the earth sitteth still and is at rest. Look, sisters and brothers, the Lord is keeping this earth at rest. If he was not involved and had his angels controlling everything, this man is is so homicidal and suicidal that he would kill himself. It's all that simple. So the Lord is controlling this thing. So now, when this angel saw that the Lord has got everything under control and everything is at rest, he wanted to know about the well-being of Israel and Judah, sisters and brothers. So he asked a question. Go ahead and read. Then the angel of the Lord answered and said, O Lord of hosts, uh -huh. how long wilt thou not have mercy on Jerusalem and on the cities of Judah? Go ahead. Against which thou hast had indignation these three score and ten years. He said, now how long will you have uh, indignation against Judah and Jerusalem? In other words, how, how long will we have to serve this sentence under all nations, under all conditions? You know, and, and getting killed and misused by all kind of people, even, our, even ourselves. So this angel wanted to know, how long will it be that you will have this uh, 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 indignation against Julia, uh, Jerusalem for these 70 years? Well, people say, well, Brother Bull, that was talking about then, but we're going to show you that 70 years was only a, a template for what's God going to do, and it's going to take the rest of the time until Jesus comes to fulfill it. So the angel wanted to know how long. So, of course, these 70 years. So what 70 years is he talking about? Let's go and look at it. Let's go into Jeremiah, the 25th chapter. Jeremiah, ch chapter 25. And have a look at this 70 years, sister and brother, because uh, this 70 years is going to turn into something else. But it all started when the Lord talk about, start to talk about taking down Jerusalem. And why? It's because we have a problem. We don't listen, sisters and brothers. We're going to start at verse 1. 
Jeremiah chapter 25 and verse 1. Jeremiah chapter 25, and we're going to start reading at verse 1. Okay, go ahead. The word that came to Jeremiah concerning all the people of Judah in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah. Uh-huh. That was the first year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. Now, this is when Nebuchadnezzar is his first year as king, but this is concerning Jerusalem. Go ahead and read. The which Jeremiah the prophet spake unto all the people of Judah and to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, uh -huh. From the thirteenth year of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, even until this day, that, that is the three and twentieth year. The word of the Lord has come unto me, and I have spoken unto you, rising early and speaking, but you have not hearkened. Now, Jeremiah's telling these people, look, the Lord has sent me to you, telling you what he don't like and what he wants you to do from the time of Josiah. He said, but you won't listen. Go ahead and read. And the Lord sent, has sent unto you all his servants, the prophets, rising early and sending them. Uh -huh. But you have not hearkened nor inclined your ear to hear. He said, I didn't send them all. All the prophets come to us. See, sisters and brothers, we were not influenced by nobody else. Because we, this is Jerusalem now. Ten tribes had already been taken away, but the, but the Lord tried to keep Judah in place. He said, but he sent all the prophets to you, and you would not listen. Skip down to verse 8. Verse 8 and go ahead. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, uh -huh. because you have not heard my words. Because you have not heard my words. Behold. Not, listen. Because you have not heard my words, not because somebody else have influenced you. Because you have not heard my wo words. This is between, this is between Israel and, and, and the Lord, sisters and brothers. Yes. Go ahead and read. Behold, I will send and take all the families of the north, uh -huh. saith the Lord, and Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and will bring them against this land and against the inhabitants thereof and against all these nations round about and will utterly destroy them and make them an astonishment and a hissing and perpetual desolations. Now, pay attention, sister and brother. The Lord said, because you won't hear, I'm going to send to the north and get Nebuchadnezzar, my servant, and bring him to the land. Well, brother boy, that's a Gentile. He's serving. Look, everybody serve God when he wants them to do a job. Teach. Just like Satan is a fallen angel, he's an evil and wicked angel, but when the Lord has something against you, he sent him or one of his minions after him. That's like he said, he destroyed Egypt by sending evil angels among them. So when you're messing with the authority that you think is pushing you too far, you might think he just might be the Lord serving. Amen. Nebuchadnezzar, he's the beginning of the Gentile dynasty. And the Lord called him his servant. And he said, I'm going to bring him against this land. So if the Lord bring Nebuchadnezzar against the land, who can stop it? This is food for thought, sisters and brothers. Go ahead and read. Verse 10. Moreover, I will take from the, from the, voice, of, take from the, voice, the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom uh -huh. and the voice of the bride, the sound of the millstones and the light of the candle. I'm going to take all this from Israel. Go ahead and read. And this whole land shall be a desolation uh -huh. and an astonishment. And these nations shall serve the king of Babylon 70 years. He said, now, so I'm going to send Nebuchadnezzar down there and he's going to destroy the whole nation. I mean, when Nebuchadnezzar hit the last time, they destroyed everything, sisters and brothers. Took down the temple and everything. And he said, and you're going to be there and Jerusalem going to be destroyed for 70 years. Now, let's pursue this. Let's go into Second Chronicles, the 36th chapter. Second Chronicles, the 36th chapter. And we're going to start with, uh, 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 with the last king that Israel has ever had. The last king that Israel has ever had, sisters and brothers. Because now this is the... After, after this guy's removed, Israel haven't had a king since. Let's go to 2 Chronicles, the 36th chapter, because it all starts because this prophecy was about Judah and Jerusalem, sisters and brothers. And the Lord letting you know that he is the one that's pulling the strings here. Even though he's doing it by the hand of the Gentiles, he is pulling the strings. Yes, sir. And this is something that we need to pay attention to. Because sometimes you might find yourself going against God thinking you're fighting against some other people. And God is the one that's pulling the trigger. Second Chronicles 30, 36 
And we're going to start reading at verse 11. This is the last king Israel has ever had. 36 and 11. Go ahead and read. Zedekiah was one and 20 years old when he began to reign. Uh-huh. And reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. Now, this is King Zedekiah, last king we ever had. And by the way, he was set up by Nebuchadnezzar. But Nebuchadnezzar took the previous king out and he set him up. And he even gave him the name Zedekiah. So, he's a, so he, he reigned 11 years. Go ahead and read. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord his God. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. Even though the Lord had tried to broker a peace for him, still Israel and the kings was doing evil. Let's look at some of this evil. Go ahead and read. And he humbled not himself before Jeremiah the prophet, speaking from the mouth of the Lord. Uh huh. And he also rebelled against King Nebuchadnezzar, uh -huh. who had made him swear by God. But he stiffened his neck and hardened his heart from turning, from turning unto the Lord God of Israel. Now, not so now he rebelled against Nebuchadnezzar, who made him swear by God, sisters and brothers, because God broke this peace deal, this, this, this thing between Nebuchadnezzar and Zedekiah. So he would have a nation in place because he tried to keep some representative of Israel in place. So somebody can punt over there and say, there's the nation of Israel. Can't do that now, or the people of Israel. So he rebelled against Nebuchadnezzar. And when he did that, he rebelled against God, sister and brother. That let you, that let you, that better make you, that make you, that make you, maybe you should think about that. Think about it. Go ahead and read what verse. We have verse 14. Go ahead. Moreover, all the chief of the priests and the people transgressed very much after all the abominations of the heathen. Uh-huh. And polluted the house of the Lord, which he had hallowed in Jerusalem. So now you got the chief priests. Those are the religious people. They rebelled and they did all this evil and polluted the house of the Lord. So Israel was going, uh, uh, Judah was going bad on every area. Go ahead and read. And the Lord God of their fathers sent to them by his messengers, uh -huh. rising up big times and sending, because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. And he still tried to bring this people into righteousness because he had compassion on it. And he wanted his, his well in place, dwelling place, which was Jerusalem and the temple to stay intact. He was trying. Go ahead and read. But they mocked the messengers of God uh -huh. and despised his words uh -huh. and misused his prophets. Go ahead. Until the wrath of the Lord arose against his people till there was no remedy. He got to the point. He said, hey, I'm going to have to do something to this people. And ain't nothing you can say at this time to stop it. He said, because there was no remedy. Because these people have really pushed the Lord too far. Go ahead and read. Therefore, he brought upon them the king of the Chaldees, uh -huh. who slew their young men with the sword in the house of their sanctuary and had no compassion upon young man or maiden, old man, or him that stooped for age. He gave them all into his hand. I mean, the Lord went there and swept all of Jerusalem, whether it was children, whether it was babies, whether you was right or whether you was wicked. The Lord said, I'm on. Clean out the whole land. Had Nebuchadnezzar take everybody out. Mm. Skip down to verse 20. Verse 20 and go ahead. And them that had escaped from the sword carry he awake to Babylon. Uh -huh. Where they were servants to him and his sons until the reign of the kingdom of Persia. Ain't that so? He took them to Babylon and they stayed there to the reign of the king of Persia. Keep reading. To fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah until the land had enjoyed her Sabbath. For as long as she lay desolate, she kept Sabbath to fulfill three score and ten years. So now when he took Judah out by the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, no Jew or Israelite went back to the land for 70 years. So until the king of Persia started to reign, sister and brother. But the whole thing is you got the prophet Daniel. The prophet Daniel was looking at this. And he read about it from Jeremiah's writing. But Daniel kept looking at this thing and looking at this thing. And, some of the, and he lived that whole 70 years. In fact, he lived two, year, two years beyond the 70 years. He was in, he might have, I don't know whether uh, uh, he died later, but I know he lived two years beyond the 70 years. He, at two years he was still there. I'll put it like that. And what he saw, it didn't, Babylon didn't come down like what Jeremiah had written how Babylon come down. We're going to go and have a look at it and show you. Let's go back.
to Daniel the ninth chapter, sisters and brothers. Because Daniel, Daniel started to pray because he said, look, what I'm looking at, that, that's not what, that's not the way Jeremiah wrote it. And he was reading Jeremiah's writing. Yes, the Daniel, the, the prophets got messages from God and the prophets wrote, the prophets read the other prophets stuff too, sisters and brothers. We're going to start at Daniel's nine and we're going to start reading that verse one. Daniel's nine and one. Because Jeremiah, because Daniel had read 25th chapter of Jeremiah, and he said, look, something's missing here. And I'm going to show you why. Nine and one. Go ahead and read. In the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, of the seed of the Medes, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans. Uh -huh. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of the years where the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet. Uh -huh. That he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. Now, Daniel said, I understood by books. So he came after Jeremiah. I understood by books that the Lord was going to destroy Jerusalem and it's going to be destroyed for 70 years. Go ahead and read. And I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplications uh -huh. with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. Now he started to pray about this because he did because he had seen some stuff that did not happen with Babylon. So he started to pray to the Lord because he knew something was missing. Skip down to verse 20 because he started praying for understanding, sisters and brothers. That's what you do. You read something, you don't understand it. Petition the Lord for understanding. Yes. Verse 20, go ahead and read. And whilst I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presenting my supplication before the Lord, my God, for the holy mountain of my God. Uh-huh. Yeah. Whilst I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in a vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly. Now, he said, while I was praying and convincing my sin and the sins of my fathers, he said, the Lord, said Gabriel sent the Lord. Uh, the Lord sent Gabriel, brother, and called Gabriel to fly swiftly. Go ahead and read. Touch me about the time <laughs> of the evening oblation. Uh -huh. And he informed me and talked with me and said, oh, Daniel. I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. So that's what, every time the angels show up, they, they bring a message. He said, so he had informed me. And, he, and look, I, t I came to give you skill and understanding. In other words, I'm going to give you some understanding in what you are praying for. Go ahead and read. At the beginning of thy supplications, the commandments came forth, and I am come to show thee, for thou art greatly beloved. Uh huh. Therefore, understand the matter and consider the vision. Go ahead. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city. Now he changed it right there. Daniel read about seventy years of Jeremiah, and Daniel had outlived that seventy years, so he knew that there was something wrong. So he started praying for understanding. So when the angel came, he said, "I'm gonna give you uh, uh, skill and understanding." Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people. That changed the whole dynamic, sisters and brothers. Yes, sir. It changed it from 70 years to 70 weeks of years. Big difference. Go ahead and read. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city uh -huh. to finish the transgression. To finish the transgression. And to make an end of sin. To ma and make an end of sin. And to make reconciliation for iniquity. To make reconciliation for iniquity. This is a whole lot of stuff, ain't it? Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. And to bring in everlasting righteousness. Uh -huh. And to seal up the vision and prophecy. Uh -huh. And to anoint the most holy. Look at all this stuff. That was supposed to be, now, 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 now that's going to be done in these 70 weeks of years. That's why Daniel went back and prayed because what he read concerning Babylon, it didn't go that way. So he knew it was something that he didn't understand. He didn't say, well, the Bible is contradicting itself. Jeremiah is right and wrong. He just said, I don't understand it, so I'm going to pray for it. Yes, sir. So all this was determined upon the people. Go ahead and read. 25. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem until the Messiah, the prince, shall be seven weeks. Three and three score and two weeks. Now, this brought it to some place else. I want you to understand from the going forth of the commandment to, to rebuild Jerusalem. Who gave that man commandment? A Greek, uh, uh, a Persian king out of Xerxes, sisters and brothers. 
until the Messiah. Who is the Messiah? Jesus. When did he become the Messiah? At his baptism. And that's when he was anointed because the Messiah means anointed one. He was not born anointed. He didn't get anointed until after his baptism. So seven weeks are determined until he come. Go ahead and read. The end of 25. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. Uh-huh. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. Now, after he get here, he going to be cut off, but not for himself. Go ahead and read. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. Who are the priests of the prince? People of the prince, the Roman sister and brother. After Jesus came and did what he did and went all back, I think it's about 30 years later, they destroyed Jerusalem down to the ground. Yes, sir. Didn't leave nothing left. Titus did in 70. Go ahead and read. And the end thereof shall be with the flood. Uh-huh. And until the end of the war, desolations are determined. Go ahead. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. He's letting you know that when the Messiah come, he's going to confirm the covenant with many for one week. What covenant was that? The covenant that the Lord made with Abraham, sisters and brothers. So he's going to confirm it with one uh, covenant with one week. But listen, let's see if he's going to finish that. Go ahead and read. And in the midst of the week, he shall call the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And in the midst of the week, he shall call the sacrifices and the oblation to cease. How did he do that? Because Jesus, when he died on the cross, he was the real sin offering. The veil of the temple ripped from top to bottom. And being that, and all the priests, when they came, they had to sprinkle the blood before the veil. So now the veil was gone, so the priests had no place to sprinkle the blood. So now if you don't have no place to sprinkle the blood, then you don't have a reason for killing the animal. Preach. That caused sacrifice to cease, sisters and brothers. In the midst of the week. But well, let's see. Keep reading. Finish that. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate. Uh -huh. Even until the consummation. And that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. And because the overspreading of abomination, the Lord totally destroyed Jerusalem. Again, that's in 7 AD. That's once they had went back, sisters and brothers. Totally destroyed it to the ground. That took it beyond Jeremiah's, uh, 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 Daniel's time. That took it beyond the time that Jeremiah prophesied, sisters and brothers. Because we talking, when he, when he went to 70 weeks, we talking about 490 years as opposed to 70 years. Yes, sir. Big difference, sisters and brothers. Big difference. So let's look at the end that Daniel saw. The end of Babylon, how Babylon came to an end. In Daniel's day, that's why Daniel knew that there was something wrong here. He saw Babylon ended. Let's go into, into uh, Jeremiah uh, uh, the tw 25th chapter again first. And we're going to look at these 70 years because uh, uh, Daniel said, look, something's wrong here. Because when I'm reading in Jeremiah, it didn't go down like that. Jeremiah 25th chapter. Go back to Jeremiah 25th chapter, sister and brother. There's sometime you read something, and when you start looking at it, you, you can say, wait a minute. There's more to this than meets the eye. And instead of saying the book is contradictory, the Bible is contradicting itself, you ask the Lord to show open your eyes. This is what Jeremiah saw. 25 and, and verse 12. Jeremiah, the 25th chapter, and read verse 12. Okay, go ahead. And it shall come to pass when 70 years are accomplished, that I will punish the king of Babylon and that nation. Now he said, I shall come to pass. When the 70 years are accomplished, I will punish the king of Babylon and that nation. Not all nations, that nation. Yes. Go ahead and read. Saith the Lord, uh -huh. for their iniquity and the land of the Chaldeans and will make it perpetual desolation. Uh -huh. And I will bring upon that laying all my words which I have pronounced against it. Go ahead. Even all that is written in this book, uh -huh. which Jeremiah has prophesied against all nations. He said, now I'm going to bring my words against it. Because Jeremiah had every nation drinking that cup of destruction. So I'm going to destroy all of them. But now let's see how this Babylon is going to come to an end. What verse? We have verse 14 now. Read it. 
for many nations and great kings shall serve themselves of them also. Uh -huh. And I will recompense them according to their deeds and according to the works of their own hands. Now look, he said many nations going to serve themselves on Babylon. In other words, a whole lot of nations going to take Babylon down. Many nations. Well, let's go and investigate this. Now Daniel's read this, sisters and brothers. He read this. But also, he saw this too. Let's go into Daniel, the fifth chapter. Now, you have read all of this, and you read all of this stuff that you've seen, and you saw the Lord say, he's going to take Babylon down by a whole lot of nations. Ain't just one nation going to come against him. A mart of nations going to come against Babylon. Yes, sir. And so Daniel's read that, but he know what he saw. We're going to start this at Daniel 5. And verse 1, Daniel's the fifth chapter, and we're going to start reading at verse 1. Go ahead and read it. Belshazzar the king made a great feast to a thousand of his lords uh -huh. and drank wine before the thousand. Now this Belshazzar, Nebuchadnezzar's son, some people say his grandson, it don't matter to me. He was the last <laughs> king of Babylon. Yes, sir. Okay? So he threw a great big feast Go ahead, to thousands of his servants. Go ahead and read. Belshazzar, while he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple, which was in Jerusalem, uh -huh. that the king and his princes, his wives, and his concubines might drink therein. He shouldn't have did that, but go ahead. Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temples of the house of God, which was at Jerusalem. Uh -huh. And the king and his princes, his wives, and his concubines drank in them. Go ahead. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold and of silver, of brass, of iron, of wood, and of stone. Uh huh. In the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. Now, they're drinking wine to material stuff out of the holy vessels and cups of the Lord. So the Lord sent a finger to write on the wall because he had a... A message for Nebuchadnezzar, uh, for Belshazzar. Go ahead and read. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. Uh-huh. Then the king's countenance was changed, and his thoughts troubled him, so that the joints of his loins was loosed, and his knees smoked one against another. I mean, he saw it. That's what you know, and it scared the bejesus out of it. Okay? <laughs> right. I mean, that really scared him straight. Now, he wanted to know. And he called in all his wise men. Let's see if they could answer this. Skip down to verse 8. Verse 8 and go ahead. Then came in all the king's wise men, but they could not read the writing, uh -huh. nor make known to the king the interpretation thereof. So the wise men, his wise men couldn't know. It's just like when things really start going down and here and all over the world, all of these people going to go to their churches. They're going to go to Catholic church and the Methodist, all these Sunday Christian churches yes. to try and find out and they ain't going to have a clue and they ain't going to be able to tell them nothing. Because the Lord has given this thing to his servant, to Israel. We got the answer, but nobody want to ask us nothing because we are the children of slaves. So they couldn't answer the question. Skip down to verse 8, uh, verse 11 rather. Verse 11 and go ahead. There is a man in thy kingdom. So somebody came and told him, he said, look, man, you got a man. His, in fact, his, his mother. So yes. There's a man in your kingdom. He can answer this question for you. Go ahead and read. In whom is the spirit of the holy God? Uh -huh. And in the days of thy father, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods, was found in him. Go ahead. Whom the king Nebuchadnezzar, thy father, the king, I say, thy father, made master of the magicians, astrologers, Chaldeans, and soothsayers. He said, but you got somebody in your kingdom, but you ain't paying no attention to him because he come from among the captains. Yes. But he told your father what's going on, and he can tell you. So he sent for Daniel. Skip now to verse 17. Verse 17. And Daniel came in. Go ahead. Then Daniel answered and said before the king, let thy gifts be to thyself and give thy rewards to another. Uh -huh. Yet I will read the writing unto the king and make known to him the interpretation. Now look, this king was so scared until he offered, I'm going to put a gold chain around your neck and I'm yes. going to make you the third ruler in the kingdom. Daniel said, I don't require none of that stuff. You can give that to somebody else. But I'm going to tell you this message. He had to tell the message because that's what a servant of God have to tell it no matter who 
<laughs> kicks against it. That's why the Lord said he rose up early, sending all his prophets to Israel, but wouldn't nobody listen. Cause the, but the prophets kept prophesying. He said, so I'm going to interpret this thing for you. Skip down to verse 25. Verse 25 and go ahead. And this is the writing that was written. Uh-huh. Many, many. To kill, you farson. Uh-huh. This is the interpretation of the thing. Meaning, God has numbered thy kingdom and finished it. God have numbered your kingdom, mister, and finished it. Go ahead and read. To kill. Thou art weighed in the balances and are found wanting. You have been weighed and you found lacking. You missing a whole lot. Go ahead and read. Paris. Thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. And I've already given your kingdom away. I've given to the Medes and the Persians. Skip down to verse 30. I mean, he was talking about immediately. Verse 30 and go ahead. In that night was Belshazzar the king of the Chaldeans slain. Uh-huh. And Darius the Median took the kingdom, being about three score and two years old. Now look, sisters and brothers, that was the end of the old Babylonian kingdom. That was the end of Nebuchadnezzar's Babylon. The one that Nebuchadnezzar uh, 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 made the ruler and conquer of the whole world. That was the end of it. Daniels saw that. Because Daniels was the one that interpreted the message. Yes, sir. So when he read Jeremiah's writing, he said, wait a minute, this didn't go down the way that I read it, the, the, way, that it, the, the way that it happened. So that means there's something more to it. So how did the old Babylon end? Not by war, not by a whole lot of nations, an assassination in the night that the Lord had done and Darius the Midian inherited the kingdom. So now, when we start talking about Babylon, we're not talking about the old Babylon. That's gone and that's done. Yes, sir. But what we read from here on out and what we've been reading that Jeremiah wrote was talking about the Babylon to come, the resurrection of the Roman Empire, the tent resurrection, which is Babylon the Great, sisters and brothers, headed by the EU. Let's go into Jeremiah, the 50th chapter, and we're going to pursue this Babylon. Because this is one of them brass mountains that we're talking about, that the angels are keeping in check. And they are keeping it in check, sisters and brothers, because they don't, they've been broke out and we'd be in trouble. Yes, sir. Jeremiah 50, Jeremiah chapter 50, because the Lord wants you to understand what is going on and what the future holds. And the future holds something that you ain't ready for. 50 and 1, 50 and 1. Go ahead and read. The word that the Lord spake against Babylon uh -huh. and against the land of the Chaldeans by Jeremiah the prophet. See now, he's telling this is science. See, Daniel's read this too. Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. Declare ye among the nations and publish. And set up a standard. Go ahead. Publish and conceal not. Uh huh. Say, Babylon is taken. Go ahead. Baal is confounded. Merodach is broken in pieces. Uh huh. Her idols are confounded. Her images are broken in pieces. Uh huh. Now I tell you, she's confounded. She done been taken down. Go, go ahead and read. For out of the north there cometh up a nation against her, uh -huh. which shall make her land desolate, uh -huh. and none shall dwell therein. Uh -huh. They shall remove, they shall depart both man and beast. We didn't see that happen, did we? We saw Darius inherit that old Babylon. So this is another Babylon. This is the future one. Go ahead and read. In those days and in that time, saith the Lord, the children of Israel shall come, they and the children of Judah together, uh -huh. going and weeping. They shall go and seek the Lord their God. Now that tells us another thing here. Teach. He said, in that day and in that time, the children of Israel shall come. I mean, all of them in Judah. When Ezra them went back to the land to rebuild the temple and the uh, 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 Jerusalem, it was just three tribes, sisters and brothers. It was Benjamin, Levi, and Judah. But at this time, all of Israel is going to come back. And they're going to come back weeping, seeking their God with their face toward Jerusalem. Go ahead and read. What verse? We have verse 5. Go ahead. They shall ask the way to Zion with their faces thitherward, uh -huh. saying, Come and let us join ourselves to the Lord in a perpetual covenant uh -huh. that shall not be forgotten. Now they're talking about joining themselves in a perpetual covenant now with the Lord. 
Because the Lord will be back at this time. But go ahead and read. My people have been lost sheep. They sure have. Their shepherds have called them to go astray. Those are the ministers. Call them to go astray by not teaching them what the books say. Go ahead and read. They have turned them away on the mountains. Uh -huh. They have gone from mountain to hill. Go ahead. They have forgotten their resting place. Look, they've gone from government to government, from city to city, from state to state, and they don't know where they belong. <laughs> ask the average Israelite, where you come from, Mississippi? Now you can ask the real, uh, what you call a uh, 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 educated one. that know about things, you can ask them, where you from? Oh, I come from Africa. Mm. Where's your plot on the African continent? You don't know where you come from. You don't even know what your name is. You done been Negro. You done been black. You done been colored people. Afro-American. Now you African-American. You don't have a clue where you come from. That's why he said they have gone from mountain to hill. They have forgotten their resting place. Go ahead and read. Verse 7. All that found them have devoured them. Everybody that found them, used them. Like, and, and ate you up like a piece of bread. Go ahead and read. And their adversaries said, we offend not. And, and they're saying, that, look, we can do whatever we want to do. And we ain't offending nobody. That's why I never understood like the Luke Ku Klux Klan would do all this stuff to us and say God is on our side. I couldn't understand that until I got some understanding. Oh, yeah, they're going to get punished for what they did to us. But in the meantime, God said this was going to happen and somebody had to do it. Go ahead and read. And the adversary said, we offend not uh -huh. because they have sinned against the Lord. The habitation of justice, even the Lord, the hope of their fathers. Ain't that something? Mm. So we ain't, we ain't doing nothing wrong because they done sin against the Lord. Go ahead and read. Remove out of the midst of Babylon and go forth out of the land of the Chaldeans and be as the he goes before the flocks. That's what the Lord is telling the people that got some understanding. Get out of Babylon. You can't move now because Israel ain't going back nowhere until Jesus comes. But you can remove out of the midst of Babylon in your mind yes. by walking in God's laws, keeping his commandments and his statutes, sisters and brothers. Starting with the baptism in the name of Jesus by blood, by water. That's how you come out of it, even though you cannot move physically now. Go ahead and read. Verse 9, for lo, I will raise and cause to come up against Babylon an assembly of great nations from the north country. Ain't that something? I will raise and cause to come up against Babylon an assembly of great nations. Those are all the nations. There's an east of the Euphrates River, sisters and brothers. Whole lot of them. Got Russia, China. Yes. Got a whole, a whole lot of Go ahead and read. And they shall set themselves in array against her. From this she shall be taken. Uh -huh. Their arrows shall be as of a mighty expert man. Go ahead. None shall return in vain. Go ahead. The Chaldea shall be a spoil, and all that spoil her shall be satisfied, saith the Lord. And it's saying that time, Chaldea, which is Babylon the Great, going to be a spoil. And everybody's fall is going to be satisfied. Skip down to verse 16. Verse 16 and go ahead. Cut off the sword from Babylon uh -huh. and him that handleth the sickle in the time of harvest. That, that, that didn't happen in Daniel's day, did it? No, sir. Go ahead and read. For fear of the oppressing sword, they shall turn everyone to his people and they shall flee everyone to his own land. See, Babylon has always been a place because it ruled the whole world and still has always been a place where you had a whole lot of people. Just like America here, sister and brother. Even though this Babylon is not talking about America. Right. I have to say that because you got some confused brothers that think it is. But it's going to be the same thing with all of you if they all mingle together. But when it get real hot in the kitchen, when the Lord starts bringing the pressure on these EU, all these people are going to turn to their own people and everybody's going to flee to their own land. And I got to ask you, where are you going to flee to, Mr. Negro? <laughs> You don't know where to flee because you don't know where you come from. Go ahead and read. Israel is a scattered sheep. Uh -huh. The lions have driven him away from the king of Assyria, have devoured him. Uh -huh. And last, this Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, has broken his bones. And he tell you the way it happened. Go back in history. You don't have to listen to prophecy, what Jeremiah said. Go back in history. 
He said, Israel is a scattered sheep. Yes. Who scattered the nine tribes? The king of Assyria. And who took out the last three? Babylon, sisters and brothers. It's all written here. It's all written. Go ahead and read. Therefore, thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will punish the king of Babylon and his land as I have punished the king of Assyria. Who, know, who knows who Assyria is now? I, who knows where Assyria is now? You know, Assyria was a great nation. It had all them great names like Bal Baladan, whole lot of them. I'm talking about them Assyrians were some bad people. There was a guy, they would catch a nation, they would catch the king and skin him and hang his hide on the wall. Yes. Everybody feared the Assyrians. And they ruled. In fact, the Assyrians is the one that set up the Chaldeans that took the place of the black Babylonians. Yes. Teach. And the Babylonians rose up and took them down. So where are the Assyrians? God said, just like I have punished the Assyrians, Babylon, I'm going to punish you. And you can look for it, sisters and brothers. Skip down to verse 41. Did you finish that? Yes, sir. Skip down to verse 41. And go ahead. Behold, a people shall come from the north uh -huh. and a great nation, and many kings shall be raised up from the coast of the earth. He keep telling you. He said you're going to be taken down by a host of nations, so many kings are going to be raised up from the coast of the earth. Go ahead and read. They shall hold the bow and the lance. Uh -huh. They are cruel and will not show mercy. Go ahead. Their voice shall roar like the sea, uh -huh. and they shall ride upon horses. Uh -huh. Everyone put in array. Like a man to the battle against the old daughter of Babylon. To bring it right down to today's time, it's going to be the Russian and all that eastern bloc. They're going to come across that Euphrates River, and the books are there, ain't going to show no mercy. And ain't nobody talking about this. Ain't nobody thinking about it. Skip down to verse 46. Verse 46 and go ahead. At the noise of the taking of Babylon, uh -huh. the earth is moved. And the cry is heard among the nations. Ain't that something? Of course the earth is going to be moved. And it's going to be a cry among the nations because this is going to be World War Three. This is the war that Jesus is going to intervene in because if he don't, there'd be no flesh saved. All life is going to be shaken at the taking of Babylon. Now let's go. Put your marker here because we're going to come right back. So I want you to put your marker right here. And let's go into Revelation, the 17th chapter, because we're coming right back to Jeremiah. Revelation, the 17th chapter, because the Lord have laid this thing out, sisters and brothers, and he intend for us to understand this. He intend for us to understand it. He gave it to us to understand, and we will understand. That's yes, all to it. Because when the Lord give you something to understand, you will understand it. Revelation, chapter 17. Revelation 17, and we're going to start reading at verse 1. Revelation chapter 17, and we're going to start reading at verse 1. Okay, go ahead. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven bowels, uh -huh. and talked with me, go ahead. saying unto me, Come here, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. See, Babylon have inherited a, a, a great religion, false religion. Says from God, and it's not. So the Lord called it a great whore that sits upon many waters, and the waters of people. Go ahead and read. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. All of them have, have uh, went over and uh, cohabitated with this woman. Go ahead and read. And the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. That is her doctrine, sisters and brothers. And the earth is drunk with it. Go ahead and read. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sit up on a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy, uh -huh. having seven heads and ten horns. Now this scarlet colored beast, this is a Gentile dynasty, sisters and brothers. This beast had seven heads and ten horns. That means this beast had been resurrected as one. What about the seven heads, sisters and brothers? The first head was Nebuchadnezzar. The second one was Medo-Persia. And you had four more, which was the Greek. And then you had one more which was the Romans. And the ten horns are the ten nations over there that's in charge of the EU right now. I know British have, brought, have fallen out, uh, uh, getting out now, but as soon as they complete their uh, exit, another one's going to replace them, sisters and brothers. 
because it have to be 10. Yes, sir. Because this beast had seven heads and 10 horns, starting from Nebuchadnezzar down until the EU. This is the same organization. That's why the Lord told uh, Nebuchadnezzar in the second chapter of Daniel, Daniel's told him by the word of God that you, the statue you have with this head of gold, this statue is represent you, Nebuchadnezzar. And the ten toes represent the EU. So it's all one thing. So now, what verse are we? We have verse four. Verse four, go ahead and read. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color uh -huh. and decorated with gold and precious stones go and ahead. pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations uh -huh. and filthiness of her fornication. Even though she was dressed with all kind of beautiful colors and was rich, still she had a golden cup in her hand that looked good, but it's full of abomination. Who are these? What are some of them? Christmas, Easter, going to heaven, Sunday, Christian Sabbath day. Jesus died on Good Friday and rose Easter Sunday morning. Your mama is not in the grave. She is in heaven looking down. Teach. Oh, Rotten John is not in the grave. He is in hell being barbecued by Satan. Teach. That's an abomination that come out of that cup, sisters and brothers. Make it plain. And let's see what she is called. Go ahead and read. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery. Babylon the Great. Go ahead. The mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Ain't that some mystery? Babylon the Great, the mother of a whole lot of misteaching religion and abomination of the earth. Babylon the Great, because now Babylon comes with a spiritual head, really, because the woman is riding the beast. So the spiritual head is really the one that's going to be directing the traffic because all of them going to be the same thing. Let's keep reading. What verse? We have verse 6. Go ahead and read. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints. Yes, sir. And with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. Uh-huh. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. So Jesus died under the Roman Empire, sisters and brothers. Even though Israel put him up to killing him. But then they turned around and destroyed the saints. Go ahead and read. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? Go ahead. I will tell thee the mystery of the woman uh -huh. and of the beast that carried her. Go ahead. Which have the seven heads and ten horns. Now, the angel said, I'll tell you the mystery of them. But I'm not going to deal with the woman. I'm going to deal with the horns. That's who we got to deal with right now. Skip down to verse 12. Verse 12 and go ahead. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, uh -huh. which have received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings one hour with the beast. Now think about it now. This Babylon that John is talking about, don't you know how far down that John, one of the twelve apostles, was away from Daniel's day? Way away from Daniel's, wasn't he? The original Babylon went down in the day of Daniel because it was inherited. But now John is talking about this Babylon great, and he said there are going to be ten kings. But they, at his time, they had not received the kingdom as yet. Yes, sir. So let's let you know this is all future. Go ahead and read. These have one mind. They have one mind. That's why they all had to be the same religion. That's why I knew England was going to drop out. I've been saying for 40 years that England was going to drop out yes, of the sir. EU. Because they got one mind. Because all of them Catholic and, the e and, and England was a Protestant. Go ahead and read. And shall give their power and strength unto the beast. They're going to give their power and strength to one man. Go ahead and read. These shall make, make war with the lamb. Uh -huh. And the lamb shall overcome them. That lets you know how long they're going to be around and what time we're in. They're going to be around when Jesus comes. Like Daniel's told you in the second chapter of, of uh, Daniel. He said, in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. Yeah, because they're going to make war with the lamb, yeah. and the lamb go overcome them. Go ahead and read. For And the lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of lords uh -huh. and king of kings. Go ahead. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. I mean, these are the people that's going to meet him in the air. These are the people that's going to be in the first resurrection. Yes, sir. They are called, and they have been chosen because they was faithful. Go ahead and read. And he said unto me, the waters which thou sawest where the horse sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. I mean, this religion is ruling over a whole lot of people, sisters and brothers. 
Amen. Even ruling over her daughters. You know why? Because her daughters keep the same thing that she set up. She set up Easter. No matter what the denomination is, the Protestants, they all got, uh, uh, they all be celebrating Easter. She set up Christian, uh, Christmas. No matter what the denomination is, they all had their Christmas trees in their front yard. Make it plain. And look at all of themselves that call themselves Christians. Out of all these various denominations, when do they hold, when do they say they Sabbath day is? Sunday, the first day of the week. That is right. So she ruling over them, sisters and brothers. But I told you to hold uh, uh, your spot there. Now let's go back to Jeremiah, the, fit, the 51st chapter. Jeremiah 51. Because this, sisters and brothers, is the Babylon that's going to be taken down by Russia and her allies. Because the Lord defined them both as two great governments. This Russia ruling all these, and the EU is ruling all the West. And both of them just like brass mountain. They ain't going to move until the Lord gets from between them, and they ain't going to move away from one another. They're going to move to one another. Now let's go back to uh, Isaiah. Jeremiah. Uh, Jeremiah, rather, the 21st chapter. 51. Uh, uh, 51st chapter, rather. Jeremiah 51, and we're going to start reading that verse 1. Jeremiah 51 and 1. Okay, go ahead. Thus saith the Lord, mm -hmm. Behold, I will raise up against Babylon and against them that dwell in the midst of them that rise up against me, uh -huh. a destroying wind. Uh -huh. And will send unto Babylon fanners that shall fan her. Go ahead. And shall empty her land. For in the day of trouble, they shall be in against her round about. Now, he just dated it, didn't he? In the day of trouble, that's when they're going to be against her. What is the day of trouble? That's during the time of the great tribulation, sister and brother. So there's going to be a time of trouble that has never been before. That's what Jesus said in Matthew, the 24th chapter. And there shall never be another time like, like that afterwards. And the day of trouble is when he's going to bring all these people against Babylon, these nations. Go ahead and read. That was the end of verse 2. Skip down to verse 6. Verse 6. And go ahead. Flee out of the midst of Babylon. The Lord is telling you the same thing. Now, when this physically happened, then you will flee out of Babylon. And the Lord's going to make it possible to say that you can. But yes. Go ahead and read. And deliver every man his soul. Go ahead. Be not cut off in her iniquity. For this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. Uh -huh. He will render unto her a recompense. This is the day of trouble. That's the one, the day that the guys was hiding from. In Revelation, the sixth chapter, so hide us from the de wrath of the Lamb. Because this day has come. This is the day that the Lord going to repay everybody what they got coming. Go ahead and read. Babylon has been a golden cup in the Lord's hand uh -huh. that made all the earth drunken. Yeah, she drunk. She's made them all drunk on religion. Go ahead and read. The nations have drunken of her wine. Therefore, the nations are mad. Go ahead. Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. How for her? Take balm for her pain. If so be, she may be healed. Ain't that so? Everybody got drunk. And that time when they start finding out that ain't this thing they've been taught wrong, they're going to be mad. But then they're going to come against her. Yeah. The Lord said we will would, would heal Babylon, but she won't be healed. I don't care how much truth you teach. She ain't going to listen to nope. it. Go ahead and read. Verse 9, we would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Uh-huh. Forsake her and let us go everyone into his own country. Uh -huh. For her judgment reaches up to heaven and is lifted up even to the sky. That's what the people are going to say. Let us go to our own country. And I ask you, brother, where is that for you? Mm. Skip down to verse 11 and go ahead. Make, verse bright, 11. make go ahead. bright the arrows. Gather the shields. The Lord has raised up the spirit of the kings of the Medes. Don't you know who the Medes are nowadays, sisters and brothers? Those are the Russians. You got the Medes and the Persians right there together like they always been. That's Russia and Iran. And they friends. They've always been together. So we're going to raise up the kings of the Medes. Those are the Russians and everybody that's going to be under their umbrella. Because Ezekiel told Russia, which is Gog and Magog, which are the Medes, be a shield and buckler yes. to the rest of the people that's in your area. So he's going to be the lead. So he's going to raise up the spirits of the Medes. Go ahead and read. For his device is against Babylon to destroy it. Uh-huh. Because it is the vengeance of the Lord, the vengeance of his temple. Go ahead. 
Set up the standard upon the walls of Babylon. Uh -huh. Make the watch strong. Set up the watchmen. Prepare the ambushes. For the Lord has both devised and done that which he spake against the inhabitants of Babylon. So I don't care how you prepare, he's going to bring you down. Go ahead and read. Oh, thou that dwellest upon many waters, uh -huh. abundant in treasures, thine end is come. Ain't that something? Thou that dwellest upon many waters. That said that about the, about the whore, didn't it? Yes, sir. But Babylon is the same, sister and brother, because the whore comes with the nation. He said, look, your time has come. Go ahead and read. And the measure of thy covetousness. And the measure of thy covetousness. Your time is over with. I'm going to bring you down. And I'm going to bring you down by the hands of the Medes. Let's go into Revelation 18 chapter. Revelation chapter 18. So who are the Medes? The Russians. I'm going to bring you down. And ain't nobody paying no attention to it, sister and brother. Everybody's sleeping. You go to church, and the only thing you want to do is church and scream and holler and jump up and down. But you don't know nothing. You don't know what's coming down. The Lord has, has cleared the way for Russia because the only ones that stood in the gap between Russia and the rest of the world was the United States. But now since we got this president, he done moved out and gave Russia a carte blanche car. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Russia is just gobbling up Eastern Europe like popcorn, and ain't nobody standing in the way. They putting back together the old Soviet Union plus some. The plus is going to be China. Teach. Revelation 18, and we're going to start at verse 1. Because the Lord said, I'm bringing you down, and I'm going to bring you down by the Medes, them Eastern nations. Go ahead and read. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power. And the earth was lightened with his glory. Go ahead. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen. Uh-huh. Is fallen and become the habitation of devils. Uh-huh. The hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Say, so look, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen. He let you know that it's been brought down at that time. Go ahead and read. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Uh -huh. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. Uh -huh. And the merchant of the earth are wax rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Ain't that something? The earth has been made drunk of her fornication. And the kings of the earth can commit fornication. Because everybody have destroyed have uh, enjoyed yes. the riches of Babylon. But now her day has come. Go ahead and read. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins. The Lord is constantly telling you to come out of her. Now this is the spiritual part now. He said that you be not partakers of her sin. Mm. That gets it away from the spiritual, physical realm. Yes. How do you come out of her and don't take part in her sin? By saying that Sunday is pagan for the sun worshiper. By saying Jesus was in the grave three days and three nights. He died, winds, and rose Saturday evening before sundown. Come out of her. Everybody that's ever died is still in the ground except for Jesus. And they will not be back until the first resurrection. That Come out right. of her. The Lord wasn't born on 25th of December. Come out of her. And all this stuff that you think that you're going to be raptured off to heaven, that didn't come from the Lord. That come from this woman. Come out of her, my people. Go ahead. What, what part of that was? Again, the middle of four. And that you be not partakers of her sins and that you receive not of her plagues. Jesus said, so don't take part in her sin. So you won't receive none of her plagues. Because what the Lord's going to bring on her, he's going to bring on you also. If you remain in her.
worship God. And if God gave us So when you went down in that water, I'm the nation, even so by the right. Being God.